Shut up. Shut up. Anything. Listen. Listen. I turned on my lights and sirens. You took off. That is a I, I be quiet. That is a looting. You can go to jail for that. Hold on. Picture this, a grandmother frantic and desperate to get her three-year-old child to the hospital. The child is in the rear in a car seat and appears to be spitting up blood uncontrollably. As she's rushing to the hospital, something terrible happens. A police car appears behind her, lights on, siren blaring. Before she can get there, she gets pulled over, yanked out of her car, thrown to the ground, handcuffed, and put in the back of a police car where a police officer yells and points at her and degrades her basically. If you do not be on your best behavior, and I mean absolute best, be quiet, I am talking. If you say another word, I'm taking to jail. Do you understand me? You are detained, be quiet, shut up. So sit here, be quiet, or else can go to jail today, okay? Meanwhile, the child is not at the hospital. If you have your, you know, a three-year-old with you in the car and you have a medical emergency, you're driving as fast as you can to get to the emergency room, to get to the hospital. A cop car pulls up behind you, tries to pull you over. What do you do? Do you continue on to the hospital or do you stop? All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what happened, who this officer is, and also what the response was from the chief of police there. I've got the available body cam footage as well as some dash cam footage Let's break it down and go through it. This has to do with the traffic stop that occurred in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Nestled in northeastern Oklahoma, Bartlesville is a city with a population of around 36,000 residents. It was initially fueled by the oil industry's boom. While it's perhaps best known as the former headquarters of Phillips 66, the city offers more than just oil heritage. It's a blend of history, culture, and outdoor recreation, making it a unique destination. This is the home of the iconic Price Tower that was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. It is sort of the essence of small town charm. Bartlesville seems like sort of a hidden gem in the heart of Oklahoma. Sometimes when you have places like that, you have these smaller town police departments and they don't necessarily have a whole lot to do. I get the sense that that may play a part in what happened here with this traffic stop. This involves a woman named Misty Armitage this happened on Sunday, April 14th. She said that she was driving her granddaughter, who was, quote, bleeding profusely from her nose and vomited blood, to the emergency room when Bartlesville Police Department Officer Reed Blackard pulled her over. The incident, which was partially caught on body cam footage, ended with Armitage's arrest and her being charged with attempting to elude a police officer and resisting arrest. EMS treated her granddaughter for a nosebleed at the scene and another family member then took the child to the hospital. Armitage said that her granddaughter had seen the family doctor and has since recovered, fortunately. This is the footage from the body cam of BPD officer Reed Blackard who pulled her over we first see anything when she's already been pulled out of the car on the ground. He's already yelling at her and putting her in handcuffs. And unfortunately that's right where it begins. We don't get to see any of her driving. We don't get to see or hear the conversation between officer Blackard and Miss Armitage. So it was only partially caught on body cam footage, but as you'll see, it caught enough. Uh when someone tells you to get out of the car, you get out of the car. Quit being so entitled. I'm not. Please, you need to go to the... Let me up. Let me up, please. Go inside. Go inside. Sit up you're not in control here. Stand up. Now you get to hang out in the back of a cop car. She needs to go to the... Charlie, just be a mess now. I'm taking you in the board. She needs to go to the... Well, make her... Get in the car, car ma'am, or I'm going to yank you in. The baby has a bloody nose. Okay. So she took off for me. Hey, we unlock the uh, door. We unlock the door. She, she assaulted you guys? Huh? She assaulted you guys? No, I told her to get out when she tried to roll up the window. Hello. 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 What happened? Yeah. 
Okay. Did you fall? Yeah. Okay. Hold on one sec. Listen, ma'am, hold on. Be quiet and let me talk. Move your foot. Move your foot. Let me talk. Well, we're going to get one to talk one to jail. Look, shut up. Shut up. Listen. Listen. I turned on my lights and sirens. You took off. That is a. Be quiet. That is a looting. You can go to jail for that. Hold on. I told you to get out of the vehicle. You did not. You can go to jail for that. You then resisted while we cuffed you. So if you do not be on your best behavior, and I mean absolute best, you do not hit on my windows, you do not yell, be quiet. I am talking. If you say another word, I'm taking your ass to jail. Do you understand me? You're going to go to jail for eluding and obstruction and resisting. Okay? You are detained. Be quiet. Shut up. Let EMS take care of your child. So sit here, be quiet, or else you're asking to go to jail today. Okay? I haven't decided yet. But if she keeps up that attitude, she's going. Officer Blackard threatens to charge Miss Armitage with eluding, obstruction, and resisting. Let's go through each of those. Eluding, it's Oklahoma Statute 4210.2, eluding or attempting to elude peace officer. And here's what it requires. Any operator of a vehicle who received a visual and audible signal, a red light and a siren from any duly authorized police officer of the state, peace officer slash police officer, operating a vehicle showing the same to be law enforcement, uh, directing the said operator to bring his vehicle to a stop and who willfully increases his speed or extinguishes his lights in an attempt to elude such officer or willfully attempts in any other manner to elude the officer, or who does elude such officer, upon conviction thereof shall be guilty of a misdemeanor and shall be punished by a fine of not more than $2,000 or by imprisonment in the county jail of not more than one year or both. So it's a misdemeanor violation, and there appears to me to be um, some defenses in there if you're not willfully trying to elude the police officer, but you're in an emergency situation trying to get to the hospital. Now let's look at obstructing an officer in Oklahoma. I actually have the jury instruction here. So this is what the government would have to prove beyond any reasonable doubt to convict you of obstructing an officer. First, that you willfully, I mean, you did it on purpose. Second, you delayed or obstructed. Third, Officer Blackard. Fourth, known by the defendant to be a police officer who was fifth in the discharge of any duty of his office. What does it mean to delay or obstruct? So in Oklahoma, words alone may suffice to support a conviction for obstructing an officer. Does she meet it here? Well, does anyone commit obstruction anywhere? It's such a vague um, charge. So the officer was attempting to pull her over for speeding. He says she didn't roll down the window all the way. Whatever, obstruction, okay. Lastly, let's look at the more serious allegation of resisting an officer. So I actually have the jury instruction for resisting an officer. No person may be convicted of resisting a peace officer unless the state has proved beyond a reasonable doubt each element of this crime. The elements are first, that you knowingly, and secondly, by the use of force or violence, resisted a peace officer and the performance of his official duties. So the officer going backwards, he was, yeah, he was in the performance of his official duties. Um, he was a police officer on duty in uniform, driving a marked car. Did she resist? Well, we don't see what happened prior to the body cam turning on. We don't see any footage of her resisting. But more importantly, the second element, by the use of force or violence. And we hear at one point the colleague asking Officer Blackard, if she used any violence against him. And he said, no, she just refused to roll down the window. She assaulted you guys? No, I told her to get out and she tried to roll up the window on me. Okay. Therefore, I think she has a solid defense to the charge or the allegation of resisting a peace officer under the Oklahoma state law. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, you get her out or get the full seat up. She obviously needs to go to the hospital. They can take the car seat or 
You're two? Is that your mama? Huh? Is that your mama? Hello. Baby with a bloody nose. She is two years old. She's talking and she's not freaking out, but she's got some dried blood on her face. What? Uh, she don't said know. She rolled. Oh, she said she rolled, but she doesn't really know. So she might have fallen. Mom is very uncooperative, so I'm not sure exactly what happened. But I will try to talk to her again. Okay, what happened What happened to her face today? I don't want to hear anything else. What happened no, to her? Nothing happened. She, her nose started bleeding out, and I tried to find something. I stopped by the casino, up by, up by the road, and then she started vomiting blood. Mm -hmm. Not a lot, but some blood. And I, a little freaky, okay? So she's telling she, us that she fell. Did she fall at any point today? She did not fall. I've been with her all day. Okay. She did not fall. She needs she needs an emergency room. She doesn't yes, need that's an why, ambulance. That's why EMS is here, because they can take her to the hospital. And, she, and she's she's three years old. Uh-huh. She's three years old? Okay. Okay. Don't put an ambulance by yourself. Well, right now you're not going with her. At this second, I'm still debating if I'm taking you to jail or not. Because you can't act like that. I don't know what's going on. Lights and sirens mean stop. And when I tell you to do something, you get out. You don't roll up the window on me. So you can you can hang out and be on your best behavior. And I might not take you to jail. We will see. Because you still could go to jail. Because you cannot do what you did today. So at no point did she fall. She did not fall today. Does she have any she, medical issues that you know of? None, none that we any know. Any allergies? No. Okay. None, none that we know of. Okay, let me go talk to you next. We so, need to decide if she's going or not. So, Mom says that get the blood off her face. she did not fall. She said that they were driving. She left the casino, and she said that she threw up blood. The mom had her at the casino? That's what she said. Well, she didn't throw up blood because it's coming straight out of her nose. Yeah. So, mom drunk yeah. or something? Uh, something's wrong with mom. She's not acting normal. I, I think she's she's going. She's going to go to jail. Let's find another parent. Yeah. In response to the public outcry there locally over this footage of police officers in this small town wrestling this 53-year-old grandmother to the ground and treating her in this way, just like in other videos I've done, regular folks were outraged about it and they expressed that outrage to their politicians. Pretty much immediately, it seems, in response to that public outcry over that body cam footage, Bartlesville Police Chief Kevin Ickleberry apologized for how his officers treated this woman as she was just trying to drive her three-year-old granddaughter to the emergency room. I was able to find specifically what the chief said. Here it is. The uh, language used, the actions taken by the officer at the moment of taking her to the patrol car and, and whatnot uh, is not us. We don't, we don't talk to our citizens that way, and, and uh, uh, for that we're going to change things, and we're working on changing things right now to, to make sure that our citizens understand that's, that's not acceptable. And as you can see, it was just such a beautiful day today. I couldn't stay inside and work all day. I had lunch with my wife, and I asked her if I could interview her, ask her this question. Um, she said no, because she's the type of person, she gets really nervous if she gets pulled over by police, and a lot of women are that way. If you have your, you know, a three-year-old with you in the car, and you have a medical emergency, and you're driving as fast as you can to get to the emergency room, to get to the hospital. A cop car pulls up behind you, tries to pull you over. What do you do? Do you continue on to the hospital or do you stop? So she had some good questions. Well, what were the baby's symptoms? And why wouldn't I already have called 911 to try to bring an ambulance to me? And those are some facts that, that, that we don't know. Now, where were they? when the symptoms first appeared? Were they already in the car so that the fastest thing um, to do was to just drive to the hospital as quickly as possible? Or did this grandmother load the child up in the car and drive to the hospital when an option was to call 911 for an ambulance to possibly get there faster? 
I don't know the answer to that. It sort of sounds like she was already on the road with the child. They were already driving. I can imagine a scenario where you have your, your child in the car seat in the back of the car, and if you think the child is vomiting up blood, and is possibly in a situation where the child may not be able to breathe, I can see that instinct to just drive to the hospital as soon as possible and not stop even for a police car behind you. Another thing that she said makes sense as well. Well, perhaps like I would slow down, I would stop, and as soon as the officer came up, I'd tell him, like, look, this is this emergency, I need to get to the hospital as soon as, as soon as possible. Come here, Bobby, come here. Come here, Bobster, come here, buddy, come on. Another good question that she had was what happened when the police officer first stopped her and he walked up to the car? You know, what did she say? Did she say this was a medical emergency, I need to get to the hospital as soon as possible? We don't know. We do hear at one point the officer saying that she refused to roll down her window. But we don't know whether that's the case or not because the body cam just turns on when he had already taken her out of the car, put her on the ground, was violently putting handcuffs on her. Come here, Bobby. Come here. So this is Bobby, Bobby the Bobcat, because he has no tail. So although there was a body cam on the officer and presumably a body cam policy in place where he was mandated to turn that body cam on before any conversation took place with this lady, he didn't do it and therefore we don't have the footage. And that leaves us with the option of taking her word for it or his word for it. Well, that's basically saying, as a default, do we side with the government or do we side with a citizen who is presumed innocent until proven guilty? I say we have to side with the citizen, don't you, Bobby? Remember, our rights don't end where your fear begins. Freedom is scary. Deal with it. Thank you.